Number 44. As one gram of a radioactive element, radium, decays over one year, it produces 1.16 times 10 to the 18th alpha particles, aka helium nuclei. Each alpha particle becomes an atom of helium gas. What is the pressure in Pascal of the helium gas produced if it occupies a volume of 125 milliliters at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius? Okie dokie. A lot of things going on here, right? So let's write down what's given, and then we'll be able to find out what formula we're going to use. Now, they said that we had one gram of this radioactive element, radium, right? And it's decaying over a year, right? So we have radium, we have a, a gram of it, and it's decomposing. And because of that decomposition, it's going to produce 1.16 times 10 to the 18th alpha particles. And each one of those alpha particles becomes an atom of helium gas. And remember, with this chapter, we only care about gases. Chances are this one gram of the radioactive element wasn't a gas. But they specifically said it was helium gas, and that's the number that we care about. So what I'm going to say is that we it started off with 1.16 times 10 to the 18th alpha particles. And alpha is represented by this like little alpha symbol here, right? So that's alpha particles. And they're saying that all of this, each one of them becomes an atom of helium gas. So now I know that I have 1.16 times 10 to the 18th helium atoms. Okay, so maybe we could do with something of this because this is the actual gas. They said it was helium gas. Now they want to know what the pressure is in Pascals. So I'm searching for a P value, P equals question mark. And it's of that helium gas, which means that I only care about this. I don't care about the one gram of radium, right? They have to stick with the same element. And it produces a volume of 125 mils. So I have a volume of 125 mils and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now, just look at the P, V, and the T to figure out what formula you're going to be using. There's two major formulas, right? The combined gas law and the ideal gas law. If you're using the combined gas law, you will see that you have sets. So you would have two pressures, two volumes, or two temperatures. But in this case, since we only have one number for each variable, we have to use the ideal gas law, which is this one, PB equals NRT. Now, this one is very specific for its units because it's all wrapped up into the R value. The R value is the universal gas constant, which is a constant value of 0 0.0821. Now, some teachers or professors might say that you need to memorize it by 0 0.08206, but in my eyes, a 6 raises the 0 to a 1, so less numbers, the better, right? I always used 0 0.0821 when I was a student, so we're going to use that one. The units for R is ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. So that's why all of these are locked into place. So the pressure, you have to get it into ATM, or you need an ATM to order to put this in. But we need to solve for the pressure, so that's okay. So if we want to solve for P, that means I should know volume, number of moles, R, and the temperature. Now the volume has to be in liters, but uh-oh, they gave us milliliters. So the first thing is, is I'm just going to quickly convert from mils to liters, right? Well, that's pretty simple. That's going all the way back to chem 1. All we have to do is just divide by 1,000. Or, similarly, just take the decimal, and the decimal's right here, just move it to the left three times, and you will get the same answer. So this would be 0.125 liters. And now we have the right unit, so I can proceed forward. N is the number of moles. But I don't see any moles here, but I do see that I have atoms. So, oh, maybe all the way back, back in the beginning of chemistry, 
we learned how to convert from atoms to moles. Remember, we used Avogadro's number, right? It's coming back. <laughs> Everyone's probably like, oh my God, who would have thought? Yeah, it's coming back, guys. So 1.16 times 10 to the 18th HE atoms. Let's just do a quick conversion, times by a ratio. The atom unit is the one that we don't want, right? So atoms goes on the bottom, and moles go on the top. If you're doing an atom to mole relationship, that's Avogadro's number. And Avogadro's number said that one mole of anything equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And from there, we can get the mole values. Atom cancels us out, cancels us, cancels out. And let's see, 1.16 times 10 to the 18th. And that's divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And three sig figs, but technically this isn't the uh, answer, so I'm going to give it a couple of more numbers after the decimal. 1.926 times 10 to the negative 6th, and now that's moles of HE. And maybe I'll just put it down here. Now I have my N value. So I got my B value, I got my N value, I got my moles. The R value is always constant, and let's look at that temperature, right? But remember, the temperature has to be in Kelvin. Uh-oh, they gave it to us in Celsius, so we got to do another conversion. Oh my goodness, this one is just full of conversions here. So how do we go from Celsius to Kelvin? You just plus 273, or plus 273.15, but it doesn't matter. This one's pretty good enough. 25 plus 273 is 298. So now I have 298 Kelvin. I finally have all the right units, so let's start plugging it in. We're solving for P, which is X, times by the volume of 0 0.125, and that equals the N value, 1.926 times 10 to the negative 6, times by that R value, of 0 0.0821, and then times by the temperature, which is 298. If we want to solve for x, all we have to do is just divide by both sides by the 0 0.125. Now, you could have gotten this as one number and then do the division, but remember, we try not to round in the intermediate steps. So try to get this all in the calculator as once, if possible. Okay, now we have x equals, let's see, 1.926 times 10 to the negative 6, negative 6, times 0 0.0821, times 298, and I'm going to divide by 0 0.125, and I get 3.79, that looks good enough. 3.79, this is times 10 to the negative fourth. And remember, we were searching for that pressure, and the pressure always comes out in ATM in the ideal gas equation. But they said, what was the pressure in pascals? So I have to now convert ATM into pascals. And that is this conversion down here. So you just have to memorize your four major pressure units, ATM, Tor, millimeters of mercury, and Pascal. But in this case, we just need to know the two of them. One ATM equals 101,325 Pascals. So we just do a little conversion here. 3.79 times 10 to the negative fourth ATM. We're going to times by that ratio. We're going to throw the ATM down at the bottom. Oh boy, what happened there? ATM I'm going to put Pascal's up at the top. And now 101,325 Pascal's equals 1 ATM. So ATM's cancel. And now you're just left with the Pascal's. So 3.79 times 10 to the negative fourth times 101,325. And three sig figs again. So 38.4 Pascal. And that's the pressure.
That's the pressure of the helium gas. So once again, guys, sneaky, sneaky, they gave you extra information that you didn't, you know, you didn't know. You're, you didn't even need to know, right? One gram of an element that is not a gas. They gave you a time, probably because they wanted you to, you know, they wanted to see if, if you knew that this capital T was temperature and not time. But always trust the formulas, okay? So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Good luck on all your future tests and quizzes, and I will see you all in later lessons. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.